welcome to knowledge center in this session i will explain you the way of finding the number of poles for a dc machine so in a dc machine while designing a dc machine we have to make a decision of number of poles so there are some rules based on which we have to select the number of poles for a dc machine okay to understand this let me take an example here so the example says that determine the number of poles comma armature diameter and length so you will also understand the way of identifying the diameter and the length of a armature core okay for the preliminary design of a 500 kilowatt 400 volt 600 rpm dc shunt generator so we have to design a shunt generator with say, these specifications for that shunt generator how many number of poles are required and what should be the a uh, diameter and length of the armature so we are designing here we are need to find we are finding the main dimensions that is d and l as well as the number of poles so watch this video till the end so that you will understand each parameter clearly and also they have given some other information here assuming a bav that is nothing but average flux density in the air gap that is the gap between the stator and the rotor okay is of 0.7 tesla so the flux density will be given in terms of a weber per meter square or a tesla and q q is nothing but in short i have written it but it means that electrical specific loading of 38400 ampere conductors per meter and assume the length of core divided by pole arc is 1.1 so these are the data or information provided first let us try to find the number of poles and then we'll go for an uh, dimensions so to find the number of poles let me tell you there are two major points to be considered the first important thing is the very first important thing is we have to see that whenever we select the number of uh, uh, poles the frequency is important that is the second point first point i'll tell you later first let us write the second point frequency should lie in between 25 to 50 hertz because we know that f is equal to p into n by 120 so here the speed is given in the question so we can make a decision on the number of poles based on the frequency so the frequency has to be within this range so select the number of poles in such a case that the frequency should lie within this range the first point that is the major point now we'll come to that point here the first point is the armature current the current per parallel path so this is most important current per path so in armature we will be having a parallel path okay so current per parallel path should be equal to or should be equal to or it will be less than you can take it as less than or equal to 200 amperes so maximum for one parallel path we can have 200 amperes as a current okay in a armature so using these two restrictions or limitations we can find the number of poles so now let's see making use of this information how to decide the poles so first let us take the first condition that is the current per parallel path should be equal to or less than 200 amps so for that first we need to identify what is the total current here right so let's find the total current so the total armature current let me denote it as ia and we know that it is a shunt generator so generally we can also mention this as il plus the field winding current ish so that armature current can be given as using this information il plus ish but we don't know il and ish here so we have an another basic formula that is the power divided by voltage that is the armature current but we are assuming one thing here that is whatever the power given here the p 500 kilowatt that itself we are considering it as an armature power this is an assumption we are making here because we don't know the further information so we can make that slight assumption here the p what i am getting is actually the output power but we can consider here the output power and the armature power are same then we can make this assumption that p equal to pa means then we can take this itself as pa that divided by v will give you ia so now substitute the values the power is 
kilowatt so into 10 to power of 3 divided by voltage is 400 so 0 0 0 0 cancel we got 5000 by 4 so it will be IA will be 1250 ampere so this is the armature current means we have this much of current in a machine in the given rating but the limitation is current per parallel path should not exceed 200 amps right so what you can do, what you can do now is uh, we have to decide the number of parallel paths okay so let's see uh, the current per parallel path so the total current is 1250 by parallel path generally the parallel paths are denoted as capital A so this has to be maximum it should be equal to 200 amps so to find the parallel path what you can do take this RHS this I will shift it to LHS side and right hand side so what I can say therefore the parallel path can be given as the total current divided by the current per path now what happens therefore the parallel path will be equal to so this will be 6.25 we get 6.25 so number of parallel paths are 6.25 but one thing you need to understand here we cannot have the parallel paths as a fraction numbers we cannot get 6.25 so either you should get a 6 or you cannot even get 7 the odd integers will not be considered here only the even numbers has to be considered and that to be whole number so 6 you can go for 6 or the next 8 among these two anyone you can select okay so this is the number of parallel path and now we are deciding the number of poles so in a lap winding see if you go for a wave winding number of parallel paths will be 2 right but here the parallel paths are more than that so you cannot go for the wave winding so this using this we can identify that the winding what I am using here is it will be lap winding so even we can decide this here the type of winding will be decided that is lap winding so in lap winding the number of poles will be equal to parallel path therefore I can say the number of poles are either 6 or 8 you have to make the decision among these two right so generally instead of designing a more number of poles when we have this comparison try to select the least number small number because if you create more poles the mechanically design will be complicated so we will go for a 6 based on this we can select the number of poles as total number of poles are 6 ok so you have to write that note if you go for 8 yes that is also good but when you go for number of 8 the number increases mechanical design is going to become complicated so I am going for 6 right so this is just based on the first condition we got this we have to cross check it for second condition also ok I hope this is clear up to this how to get the number of poles I think it is clear but you should not conclude it here itself you have to cross check it with this second point so what is the second condition once after making the selection of poles you have to check that whether the frequency is going to lie in between these two or not so put it in this and see what is the frequency so let me check it therefore frequency will be let me write it here I will erase this so F is equal to 6 into the speed is 600 rpm by 120. 0 0 cancel, 6 1 the 6 2 the 2 1 the 2 30. So the answer is 30 hertz. Yes, the frequency is in between the range. So yes, we can go for 6 number of poles. So this is the way of deciding the number of poles for a DC machine. So I'll just repeat it in short. First case is the current per parallel path should never be exceeding 200 amps here and there sometimes it may be 210, 220 it's okay because if it is more than 200 you have to provide the ventilation and that to be fractional variation should be there this is first condition and second one is the frequency should be in this range 25 to 50 hertz okay so based on this find out the total current and after finding the total current divided by parallel path that should be equal to 200 okay so total current by 200 equal to parallel paths so after getting the parallel paths the parallel paths will be equal to the number of poles if it is lap winding okay so uh, if, uh, if the parallel paths are more than two better we go for a uh, lap winding so here i also told you how to decide the type of winding whether the lap or a wave 
So here I can go for lap winding. So according to that, the parallel path will be equal to the number of poles and we decided the number of poles as 6. Here also we got one challenging condition that is 6 or 8. So when we get 6 or 8, the larger number, when you go for larger number of poles, it will be a problem for design to go for the least number. So we selected 6 and then cross check with this second condition. If it is in this range, yes, then you can decide with the, you can fix that number as the poles. I hope this is clear. Now let's move on for the second version of this question that is identifying the diameter and the length. Okay. So let's look into that part now. So in order to find the main dimensions D and L, we are going to make use the formula of output equation. So the output equation has been given here. The armature output equation is PA is equal to C0 that is output coefficient D square L into L. So what is that C0 the output coefficient means it is 1.64 into 10 to the power of minus 4 into the average flux density that is the specific electric load magnetic loading into Q that is specific electric loading in terms of we can be considering it as an ampere conductors per meter. So these two information is given directly in the question. BAV is of 0 0.7 Tesla and Q is 38,400 that is ampere conductor per meter. Okay. So just substituting that we get C0 and by substituting C0 here we can get the D square and L. So first let us try to find D square L. So for using this, I am writing the expression for d square l. So d square l can be given as the output for Pa divided by C0 into L. And C0 is this much, so I return exactly as it is. So by substituting the numbers here, that is 500 is the power divided by all this information. BAV is 0 0.7, you just substitute it here. By substituting this, I will write the answer here. We get it as 0 0.189 meter. Okay. 0.189 meter will be the answer for d square L and let me take this as equation 1 but in the question it has been asked you to find d and L so you have to separate it combinedly we got some number here but you have to separate it so to separate this what you need to do we have already and studied the derivation of the separation of d and L there using that we can solve it so the pole arc and pole pitch ratio has to be used in this question, they have given some information related to that. So let's see that. See, we have this information. The core length by pole arc is equal to 1.1. So let me make use of this and try to find the separate values of D and L. The core length, let me take it as L divided by pole arc. Okay. So that is nothing but we denote it as B. So let me write it as pole arc as it is, is equal to 1.1. So now we don't know what is the value of pole arc. If we know this, we could have directly got the L. But we have some relation for pole arc. That is, we have pole arc by pole pitch, which is equal to 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. Okay, it will be in this range. This we call it as a psi. The pole arc by pole pitch ratio should be lying in between 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. This is what the theoretical value we deserve. We decide. We already discussed in the previous videos, right? So now we have to make a decision here. So for this, we will make a decision of considering 0 0.7. So I will consider that the pole arc by pole pitch ratio is equal to 0 0.7. Okay, right. So you consider either you can select 0 0.6 or 0 0.7. Better option is to go for a larger number. Okay. So you have to remember all these points sir. You have to better you have to select the larger number here. But while selecting the number of poles, better you will select the smaller number. So now and that should be in between smaller and larger. Not, not too smaller and too larger. So here is 0 0.7. So pole arc I want. So what I can do now? Pole arc can be given as therefore pole arc can be given as 0 0.7 into pole pitch. The pole pitch can be denoted as tau. So I can write it like this. Now if you know the pole pitch, then you can substitute it here. So what is pole pitch? We have a formula for pole pitch that is pi d by p, number of poles. So we know the value of pi, we know the value of p, but we don't know d. But we can substitute it in terms of d. So pi by p, p is number of six, uh, p is number of poles, that is six. So 3.142 by six, if you do that, we get it as 0 0.52 d 
that is the value of tau. So now what I do, I substitute it here. So therefore, what finally I can write here, therefore, L is equal to 1.1 into the polar arc. Okay, so what is the polar arc? Polar arc is 0.7 times of tau. Okay, into 0.7 and what is the tau value? That is pole pitch 0. Point, sorry, into 0.52d. So we get L in terms of D, that is diameter. So if you simplify this, we get some number. So that is L is equal to 0.4d. Let me take this as equation 2. Right, we got L in terms of D. And here I got d square L. Now just substitute this value in equation 1. Substituting equation 2 in equation 1, what I get? I will get D, value of D. Because d square L I have. So what I do now? d square in place of L I write this. 0.4D is equal to 0.189 meter. So use your calculators and do, do simplify this. You will get D cube 0.189 by 5 by 4, 0.4. It will be D cube. 0 0.189 by take this to the RHS it will be 0 0.4 so once you simplify the dq value we are going to get the answer as 0 0.78 so therefore after simplification I will write it as 0 0.78 meters yes so use your calculators properly just find the value for d and also after getting the d value you can take this as equation 3 substitute this in the equation 2 so that I can get L because L is equal to 0 0.4 times of D. Now just take 0 0.4 into 0 0.78 that is going to be value of L. So 0 0.4 into 0 0.78 will give you 0 0.312 meters. So units are most important. Mention the units properly. Right. So this is L value and this is the diameter of a armature core. This is how we have to solve the problems regarding the design of a DC machine. So here I hope it is very clear for you to identify the way of identifying the number of poles and D and L that is the main dimension. If it is clear just like it and also share among your friends so that they can also gain the knowledge. Thank you.